Hi friends. So uh, we are into a course on uh, risk-based engineering. Um, the topic is uh, uncertainty modeling and analysis. And today's subject is parametric approach to uncertainty. Uh, this is third lecture uh, on uncertainty. I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde. And um, um, now we will start the lecture. Okay. So the best way to uncertain understand the uncertainty um, is like this. Uh, we have a distribution here. Okay. Um, is seen here. You are you are all aware about this uh, uh, type of distribution, uh, and what makes the distribution is data. How the data are coming in. So you have mean value, and it is a probability density function of x, which we call. Now, if we draw line at two end, then we call lower bound or upper bound of distribution. Now. Uh, this particular uh, aspect has been considered in a uh, risk analysis uh, as uh, capturing the uncertainty or representing the uncertainty. So uh, often it is called as un uncertainty bound, you know, 5% uh, to 95%. Why it is uh, important? It is important because uh, when we have the uh, data, uh, we have the mean value. Um, there is a good amount of population is spread on both the sides. Uh, if it is a normal distribution uh, and if it is a log normal distribution, it is a skewed one. So a uh, uh, lot of population is there on the right side and uh, left side. And uh, so that there uh, we call it as a median. In normal we call mean value. So uh, there, there is a need to understand and how far these values can go to two extremes. Why we want to understand that? Because when we are designing the system, this uh, tail end can make the, uh, uh, is very useful and can, uh, they can enable us to understand the failure characteristic of uh, two interfacing components. Uh, are two interfacing parameters, stress, strength, you know. So this is how uncertainty can be understood in a better way by a uh, uh, spread. Now, <clears throat> in probabilistic risk assessment, it carries uh, special significance because we talk about the component failure probability. And what probability we talk about is uh, because for most of the components, um, when we have access to the database, we find that uh, they have distribution of uh, log normal distribution, you know. So log normal distribution, uh, when it is uh, defined, uh, the uncertainty is typically characterized by the 95% bounds. Uh, and then uh, these bounds can be one side, both sides, uh, whatever is uh, required, what is, whatever is our interest uh, in estimation of uncertainty for, uh, for arriving at the failure estimates. Uh, the, scope of this lecture covers uh, on the discussion on confidence bound and how it is interpreted for uncertainty and illustration of a uh, few of these approaches that we'll be uh, discussing. Okay. So the confidence interval and uncertainty, uh, we, if we discuss, um, it is a practice in uh, risk-based engineering to, uh, to take confidence interval as the representation of uncertainty. Uh, because uh, mathematically, there are, this is one of the effective way uh, which can characterize the uncertainty. Now, the, our interest could be either on both sides, uh, that is uh, uh, upper bound and lower bound, or it could be on upper bound only. So, uh, one sided or two sided confidence interval uh, we have. Um, now, uh, in PRA mod modeling, the uncertainty characterization Generally, we take both the sides, that is uh, uh, upper bound and lower, lower bound to understand the uh, uh, randomness of the parameter. Now, uh, uh, you know, we come across two types of distribution. Uh, one is continuous distribution, like pump failed to start, lambda. Sorry, uh, pump failed to start. It is a basically discrete event. But uh, pump 
started but it operated for some time that is failure to run so it is called continuous distribution so continuum of time is uh, uh, characterizing the data in continuous distribution while as the epoch of time uh, that is demand failure probability is a discrete distribution so we have we are treating these two types of data extensively in uh, uh, in risk based engineering and the data available also we have to convert in these two forms that is continuous or um, discrete data and also in generic source also this broad class classification is accepted so um, there is a, a assumption that uh, exponential distribution and log normal distribution these are the two extensively used distribution in our uh, risk assessment or risk based engineering so the there is a called chi square distribution chi square distribution or uh, i would say otherwise round the exponential distribution can be approximated to chi square distribution uh, with certain condition of uh, relational likelihood and one of the point estimates you know so and then um, in practice um, for log number distribution instead of having the bound the distribution is expressed by error factor error factor is nothing but 95% bound divided by the median value so that will give us error factor it can range from uh, maybe from 2 to 10 so that's how it is but normal distribution is not it the way it is used in design and all uh, it is not used uh, to the extent possible in uh, risk analysis and uh, regarding discrete distribution Uh, there is a f uh, that is demand failure probability two types of distribution are used binomial if you are trying to model um, a permutation combination of two out of 10 failure uh, scenario or one out of two failures so uh, binomial distribution uh, and if we are, are having a data on demand failure probability something like this then we use the f distribution so these are broad guidelines that is available for uh, us to when we want to go for risk analysis now let us understand the concept of uh, 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 maximum likelihood estimator when we collect the data we collect the mean value or we we collect, we arrive at the value of failure rate now uh, in mathematics uh, it will be better to call whatever estimates we have arrived is a estimator of the ideal estimator let us say if it is a failure rate the uh, the estimator of lambda we can call because um, with more data or less data or inadequate data we are not sure what we calculated whether it is representing the uh, the parameter in question so uh, that's why uh, let us say here uh, we can see the estimator le uh, for lambda it is called estimator because we have certain failure r failure and t is the time time period uh, during which this data has been collected so lambda k is the estimator of rt this is a case for exponential distribution okay so uh, a concept of estimator has come into picture because we don't know the actual estimator um, what it was 10 year ago what it is today what it will be tomorrow but that's so that's why we uh, use estimator of uh, the distribution now for solving the problem of ex exponential distribution to characterize the uncertainty uh, there is one assumption which says that 2r that is twice of failure rate and the ratio of uh, estimator divided by the uh, lambda uh, is uh, can be approximated to 2 lambda t if this is true then it follows chi square distribution because uh, uh, because we want the uncertainty bound and this is the one with uh, with a degree of freedom 2r plus 2 if it is a type 1 test type 1 is time terminated test and 2r plus 2 degree of freedom is on the same phenomena how many replication of readings are available that is called degree of freedom so to our degree of freedom for failure terminated test because when we do one is data collected from the field so uh, and the second is we are generating data by uh, putting the complete population on test so it can be terminated either by number of failure if 10 failure out of the 100 we stop the test if uh, that is one case second case is uh, if 
uh, time terminated test. This will be uh, population of n uh, component. It will be tested for let us say uh, thousand hours. So whatever number of failure we get in thousand hours, uh, we uh, we call call them as a time terminated test. And these two are extensively used for characterizing the failures. Um, so and the one more important parameter in in confidence interval is significance level alpha, and one minus uh, alpha. It is the range which gives us probably probabilities okay around the uh, estimator of lambda so it is called maximum likelihood estimator for lambda this lambda cap this we have to bear in mind uh, uh, when we are dealing in the uh, risk modeling or risk based engineering or even probabilistic risk assessment now uh, as we were discussing the case of exponential distribution uh, we have the significance level here 1 minus alpha okay because uh, if we have uh, we'll come to that what it means actually 1 minus alpha um, when alpha is the uh, significance level uh, summation of for failure ftt means failure terminated test time terminated test and the summation summation over till in infinity lambda t rest lambda is failure rate t is the mission time and k is the uh, degree of freedom represented like this here exponential minus lambda t divided by k and here this uh, comes to 0 to 2 lambda t because uh, uh, when we uh, when we have a continuous type of distribution 2 lambda t and this is f chi square dx square okay so from exponential to we got it converted to chi square distribution and therefore the two side interval now you can see here um, it is driven by so probability of 2r lambda by lambda cap whatever was our assumption is uh, we are now in chi square distribution chi square significance level divided by 2 and 2r r is the number of failure so 2r uh, it becomes the degree of freedom and then we have uh, upper bound this is lower bound upper bound is 1 minus alpha by 2 2r chi square and then now what we'll get is by this alpha by 2 or 2 r these two parameters are listed in the table i'll show you by taking up an example so that we are in clear in our mind what we are trying to do but little bit here let us focus on this substituting uh, lambda cap by rt if we do that uh, rt means r will go and what we'll have is lambda only so that means very conveniently we ob obtained here the for lambda the upper uh, lower bound and upper bound with this model by this substitution so probability of low uh, lambda being between these two that is lambda more than this and less than this quantity is equal to 1 minus alpha so what what we have is this two sided uh, distribution or two sided uh, intervals we can have one side interval also uh, makes, make this as zero because sometime we have to proceed in uh, the problem is such that we have to go only on upper side. So we use this distribution. Uh, on this, now once we do this, uh, when we derive this particular thing, we can derive the uh, upper and lower bound for liability also at t, t is equal to d, t zero and mean time to failure also, and we'll see what will be the typical results in the in this table. Now let us see. We said time terminated test. So for uh, for alpha, we have estimated these two bounds. Okay. Uh, for mean time to failure, we all know that uh, mean time to failure is inverse of lambda rate. So this quantity comes over here, and this quantity comes over here. Okay. Very simple. Uh, when we go for liability exponential lambda t zero. So this term comes here which is defining the reliability and similarly for type 2 also only degree of freedom it matters that is one thing and then we can give for failure rate also uh, this uh, lower bound and upper bound similarly as a the same argument for mean time to failure is 1 upon uh, inverted that is and then we have 2t upon one, this one and for reliability we have this e raised to power minus lambda t if we know uh, in exponential distribution. So, uh, 
uh, we got a very very useful table for uh, complete spectrum uh, for one parameter exponential distribution and the para, uh, parameter of the distribution is uh, lambda or failure rate so having uh, understood about exponential distribution let us see one small example so that we have a better uh, understanding so we know that the maximum likelihood estimated is lambda cap is nothing but r by 2 so in this table we have 10 total uh, this is a case of uh, you know loss of offset power how many number of we all experience in our house also similarly power failure we experience in our plant but in plant it has got a special significance uh, from the point of view of safety so uh, loss of offset power exercises are done so suppose if these are the in 10 years time if th these are the number of failures total uh, coming to 10 if they are there it is very simple maximum likelihood estimator is r by t is 1 per year one aspect of this thing we understood now let us say uh, significant significance level is uh, let us say 0.1 so that means we can go for 5% and 95% that is 0.05 and 0.95 uh, on two sides uh, confidence limit okay so how to go about we know that for chi square uh, distribution uh, we have this is the model uh, for lambda and uh, this is the uh, this is the 90% uh, confidence limit so we we call confidence uh, limit uh, confidence interval is 90% confidence interval but the upper lower bound is 5% and upper bound is 95% and this is how we uh, now uh, if we have a chi square table and we know that alpha 2 is equal to 0 0.1 which is the case over here and 1 minus alpha 2 uh, will be uh, 0.95 that is uh, it will 95% uh, confidence level. So, what is the value if we see from table uh, for this parameter? So, let us say take the case here. So, chi square table alpha 2 and 2 are degree of freedom means 20, 10 failures, so 20. So, alpha 2 uh, is uh, uh, alpha 2 is uh, uh, lower bound. So, 9.59 is the value we get the from chi square table. Similarly, I will come to that table on the next slide and for uh, chi square 1 minus alpha 2 and 2 r that is 20 and 95 percent I have value 31.41. Now how to see this value from chi square table because it has got a lot of practical use. So typically in percentile uh, we have uh, the it is and the degree of freedom over here and percentile from uh, 0.5 to 99.5 percent uh, on the top. Uh, header event and then here if you see uh, for 20 degree of freedom 20 degree of freedom and uh, 2.5 per uh, sorry it should be 10.85 uh, percent that is 5 percent uh, thing uh, will have this value and for 95 percent will have 31.41 so actually it should not be 2.5 percent it should be 5 percent 10.85 now we take this value of 10.5 from here and uh, and then finally uh, we we put those values so as i said uh, alpha by 2 is uh, 0.05 we got here actually this value should be 10 point something that is, i told you there in 31.41 based on that we estimated the failure rate 0.48 and 1.57 so it, here it will be 10 so almost it will be around 0.5 okay and that's how we got the uncertainty bound 0.48 and 1.57 while the actual uh, lambda that is lambda cap uh, actually lambda cap was here 1. So what we got basically is upper bound and lower bound. So 1 is the cap, lambda cap 0.48 lower bound and uh, 1.57. So if I if I have that correction of 2 or 5 percent then it will be around 0 0.5 0 0.5 here and 1.57 here. Okay. Now, when we do it for log normal distribution, um, confidence bound, we know that um, uh, like for normal distribution, even the data coming from the field, uh, it can be plotted and uh, then you, have, you can estimate the mean and uh, sigma uh, that is uh, standard deviation. Okay. Uh, but in log normal distribution, the logarithm of the data which is coming from the field that will follow a log normal distribution. So we have logarithm of Ti. 
and then rest of the treatment we give like a normal distribution. So here it is a T distribution and all that. So, um, so um, what we have is mu T is equal to like normal distribution uh, len T i by n and uh, sigma square is equal to that is uh, standard deviation is equal to summation of this uh, difference T i individual uh, data point minus mu uh, estimate of uh, mean n minus 1. Okay? And this uh, way um, any book will show uh, if you are interested that this is the formulation for lower bound and upper bound 1 minus alpha represented here. So, uh, we have got a 95% uh, 95 upper bound uh, for median value and error fact. But actually this procedure involves integration you know. So, uh, it is very uh, challenging like in normal distribution you convert normal to standard normal then only we are able to use the table and get the value straight and uh, job becomes very simple. So, similarly in uh, in uh, uh, risk analysis also uh, normally uh, error factor is used instead of this approach uh, because of uh, because when we have to e evaluate uncertainty for hundreds of the component uh, it is it is very time consuming. So, a straightforward rule is there the error factor represents uh, uh, the uncertainty in the data. Okay. So, how like normal distribution is uh, defined by mean and standard deviation similarly um, in log number distribution uh, also the, the me median time median time and error factor they characterize the uncertainty and the distribution itself. So, this is the uh, practical solution that we have over here use error factor. In fact, even database which are available at national and international level they also convey the results in error factor. So, this is one advantage when we use uh, log normal distribution and error factor is nothing but ratio of 95 percent uh, divided by median value that is 95 percent of the bound divided by the median value. Okay. So, Overview of this lecture is uh, we have discussed exponential distribution um, extensively used because time to failure uh, it is the uh, viable and exponential distribution they give, give effective solution. Um, and then log normal distribution when we are taking data from uh, different sources. So, they have sort of independence. So, uh, to, uh, to capture that thing uh, variability uh, log normal distributions are used. One simple example of loss of offside power we have taken uh, and we have demonstrated how to estimate the loss of offside power failure frequency which was average was 1 that is likelihood estimator was 1 while lower bound was 0.5 per year and upper bound was uh, 1.48 or something was there. So, with this lecture uh, we are now able to appreciate how to characterize uncertainty. Okay. So, um, in the future lecture we will be using few more methods which are used uh, for risk based engineering. One is the Monte Carlo for fault tree uh, uh, characterizing uncertainty in the fault tree from component level to the top level and then uh, uh, other method will be fuzzy based method uh, which will translate help to translate uh, the unambiguous or sorry ambiguous and uh, imprecise value into quantitative estimates. So, with this we come to an end of uh, uh, parametric methods that, we, uh, that uh, we, we wanted to understand and all of you must have got a better feel about the parametric method. Thank you.